done side one, side two they'd done 15 minutes and the producer said, we need another song, we don't have another one. Well, we'll need to do a cover, would you like to do a cover? So they weren't too keen on the idea of a cover, so uh, they went out to the pub for half an hour. Tony Iommi came up with the riff, which sub subsequently became Paranoid. Oh, really? came back yeah. in and Tony played it and the producer, I can't remember who the producer was, and said, hey, that, that, that's quite catchy, let's try and get a lyric for that. And they wrote that in about, they wrote Paranoid in about 10 minutes and stuck it on just as a filler Jesus, to fill up yeah. the album. So that's the way it goes a lot of the time. Doesn't mean you're recording a Def Leppard album. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, the last one we done was, was Pour Some Sugar on Me. We'd actually done the whole album and Mutt said, I think we won short. Like, some, and, and we actually done that song in about well, 10 days, which was really quick considering the last day album was like three years. So yeah, that, that was the last little bit. It was, wow. it was a pour some sugar. I mean, same, same deal, really. Same, same idea. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and same with Turn It Up. Same thing as well, wasn't it? it was yeah. Like the last one we did. Actually, yeah. End, yeah. It's just goes to show. It's a good recipe, yeah, isn't it? Always need last another minute. song. Yeah, always need that last <laughs> song. When you're not thinking about it, when, yeah. when there's no like pressure or stress or anything, you go, fuck. And it just comes out naturally. It's, mm. it's, that's, the, that's the really cool thing about it. Mm. You're not like, it's, it's not, it's got more integrity because it actually it's a natural it just flows you know it's great that, that sparkle lounge album that, that was the best one you've done for years that's oh, a great thanks. album that, every song you know, that's a, a cracking song that's, cheers it was nice to get back to yeah to you know a, a rock album you know? yes yeah. it's a damn good album damn good listen to get it the end cheers I like that Right, let me do what I was going to do there. I was going to put this on this. So we'll take out one. It's amazing, mate. You know, even if you don't like Black Sabbath, the, the influence. Hello. All right. Hello. 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 Just like Metallica, mm -hmm. just all these sort of metal bands, everything. Absolutely. I'm just going to let you hear my my favourite little jingle here. We like to have a laugh on the station. You know, not only play good music, but some of our little jingles and things are quite. Uh... I can't be bothered saying 96.3 Rock Radio here, so I won't. Oh, f I did! <laughs> There's a little jingle that goes in between songs. And here's another one. The Beard of Doom. Only seen on Tom Russell. 96.3 <laughs> Rock Radio. We've got dozens nice. of these little things. In fact, I've got one that you did for me. <laughs> down in London when we were doing the songs for a Sparkle Lounge interview. Okay, right, yeah, yeah. You did yeah. one for me. <laughs> I'll let you hear it in a minute. What area, Remember, what area did I do? It's the Glasgow area. Yes, Glasgow yeah. in the West, this one. Yeah. And Edinburgh. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Bringing back some memories, some classic memories from... A long, long time ago, Black Sabbath with Black Sabbath on 96.3 Rock Radio. Joining us live in the studio, we've got my cup of tea, Phil Collin of Def Leppard and Man Rays, Paul Cook from the Sex Pistols and Man Rays, and the third member of Man Rays, Simon Laffey, originally in Girl. Hi guys. Hey Hi. Tom, how's it going? All right, thank you for coming in. Well, thanks uh, for having me. Got to ask you first of all. Last night you were on at the Armadillo. You were uh, opening up for Alice Cooper. How did it go? It was great. I mean, once you're in the building, it was great. It was awful. As if anyone from Glasgow know, last night it's like gale force winds and pouring with rain and everything. But uh, and we had a great time. The audience was receptive, and it, it was cool. It was actually really cool. Did the audience know many of the songs, or was it uh, was it an introduction basically to my One race? guy knew all the words. I think the, the guy standing up at the front. It was, it was uh, yeah. I think a couple of people knew knew the songs. The other people were just like curious, but uh, they, it was great. You know, they gave us um, respect and everything. So it was, it was cool. Yeah. yeah, Paul. Perhaps you can tell us uh, the concept of Man Race. Um, why? Um, or why? Um, be because we can basically, you know. Um, <laughs> 
Uh, Phil, Phil and Simon originally started the van uh, as a kind of side project to do stuff that uh, Phil couldn't do in the Death Leopard setup, I guess, you know, and they were, they were looking for a drummer for a little while and um, they were looking for me, funny Actually, enough. specifically Paul, yeah. it wasn't anyone else. It was like, yeah, they said, um, the story goes, they were looking for me and um, Phil almost run me over, funny <laughs> enough, uh, and he was driving down Fulham in uh, London and I walked across the road and uh, it was a bit of a shock. He goes, hey, I'm looking for you. I said, oh, really? Yeah, no. What for? He goes, oh, I've got this thing I'm doing. Check it out. Give me a call and, and give me the CD and stuff. And I didn't listen to it. And it kind of went from there, really. It was just one of, one of those uh, freaky things that happened, you know. And uh, I got involved like that. I listened to the stuff they were doing and dug it, you know. And thought, yeah, I could get into this. And uh, it kind of worked from there, really. And we've been building it up from there. I have got to ask you, Phil. Uh, Simon, I'm not ignoring you. No, <laughs> You're sitting over in the corner there. Uh, I've got to ask you, Phil. Um, the, the stuff that you've done in Def Leppard for all these years, people might be surprised at the fact that you were looking for the Sex Pistols drummer uh, to to uh, to join you in your other project. Not really. Actually, we've and I've told Paul this before. Actually, like a few years ago, actually. Um, We'd always reference that, you know, even with, with Mutt Lang when we'd be recording it, it'd be like, you know, that cookie snare drum, like the way Paul hits the, the, the drums, it's like really unique. I mean, when we first started playing, I was like, what? It's, it's not often you can actually go, you hear something, you know who the drummer is, but there's just a sound and the way he hits stuff is very uniquely Paul, you know, it, it just the symbol, he has the same symbol he used to have, you know, it's on the Pistols album and everything. And it, it, it's a yeah, sound. Yeah. It's still got that old symbol, yeah, it's still oh. there, yeah. <laughs> and, it, and it's great, and, and that was the thing, so, you know, and I've always been a huge fan of the Pistols, and just like the, the energy and just, just what it was, you know, it was, if anyone, if anyone forgets, it was, it actually changed everything, changed music, fashion, politics, everything that was actually happening in Britain at the time, it just completely changed it. Yeah. Uh, and just the aggression, you know, it was actually a, a real voice. So, you know, to have that in, as, as part of your driving force you know, musically and the sound, it, it was, was really uh, amazingly unique. So, that, yeah, that was, that was pr pretty obvious in my books, actually. You, you mentioned Mott Langer, who, of course, uh, produced uh, many of the, 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 the fantastic Def Leppard albums. And strangely, yesterday we had a request, uh, yesterday afternoon on the show, and we played it. I don't know if you'll remember the song Stevie Langer. I uh, yeah. would remember my name, which was uh, Mutt's wife, of course. Yeah, Mutt's wife at the time. Actually, yeah. Stevie sang on uh, some backing vocals on uh, When Love and Hate Collide. Really? And, uh, yeah, that's her doing all the, among other stuff. I mean, she just had this amazing voice, you know, Stevie. She's, uh, yeah, I don't know what she's up to right now, but yeah, we, we definitely got a history with Stevie. Remember Stevie's. my name. Yeah. Don't know if you remember that one, Simon, do you? I don't know. No, no. Sorry. You, of course, were uh, a Phil's compatriot in the, the band Girl way yeah. back. Uh, your, your memories of these days? Well, I mean, we had a fun time. We were young, we were kind of wild, a little bit over-enthusiastic, but we had a great time. Um, looking back, we have no regrets, and we've always remained firm friends over the years, so it was really easy to slot back into doing music with Phil. It was a real pleasure as well. Well, let's hear how it sounds. This is uh, one of the, the singles from the, uh, the album, the surreal album. This is Man Ray's on Rock Radio with Turn It Up. There you are! The second chapter. Faster, isn't it? Wow, I can't believe we're actually doing it slow alive. <laughs> <laughs> 